there's a lot of fans that want Patricia fired because of the performance that we had this off this season, you know. And uh, it's understandable because we want results. But there's something I want to bring up, and it's Steve Mariucci's comments. Okay, so Steve Mariucci said, and uh, I don't have the quote in front of me, so I'm gonna completely mess it up. But <laughs> he pretty much said the Detroit Lions need to get that revolving door out of their front office. Okay. And this has been something that I've been saying for a while and a lot of people have been saying for a while is that we keep getting coaches and then after two, three years, they're out of the door, right? And when you're a team that hasn't seen success in a long time, it's easy to get very frustrated very fast when you're not seeing results, right? But, you know... Bill Belichick, I know I, everybody hates bringing up Patriot stuff, and so do I, but, like, Bill Belichick had two years on the Browns, didn't do anything. You know what I mean? Pete, there's, there's there's a number of coaches. I, I was just naming Bill Belichick. Yeah, yeah. All, <laughs> actually, Patriots, but, yeah, and he's the greatest coach of all time. But, dude, I you know, I agree. We need to give people – a chance, and I've always said this in regards to the argument of Stafford being an elite quarterback as well, because every single elite quarterback that you can name has had a consistent coaching regime throughout their career, and they've had success building upon each year of failure. You know, because you know, every every to me, everything's a failure unless you get to that championship or, or win the championship. So you're failing every year unless you're winning the Super Bowl. To me, right. So if you're making the playoffs and losing in the divisional round, you know, you're still failing. You need to build on that failure to get better every single year. And these coaches and these quarterbacks together have been able to build upon their failures and successes. And Stafford's not been able to have that. He has to keep having a new offensive coordinator come in, entire scheme changes, has to like do an entire new offense. You know, when we hired Bevel, he was like, man, Stafford's so good at doing this. It's because he's done it like 50 freaking times. <laughs> He knows every offense in the league by now, probably. Seriously, right. like, I just don't I, – I, I would love to see the Lions stick with a coach like they are right now with Patricia. Um, even – because, you know what? I'm a fan. I'm a, I'm a Lions fan. I'm a long-term fan. I'm going to be a fan forever, probably. So stick with a coach. Try and build on your success. If it means another year of failure or something, like, I'm not going anywhere. Like, whatever. You know what I mean? Like – Try and build on that success. If it doesn't work, then you really know it doesn't work. Not that you cut it short and and too fast, and it could have maybe worked, and now you're starting over, and now you have a whole new coaching regime, and they don't have the players they want, so they need to bring in their new players. They need to fill in their coaching staff, and it takes them about three years to do that, and then you cut them because it didn't work out, whatever. It hasn't been working for us for this long. We need to try to have continuity in our in our in our organization and um you know at least at least other coaches might see that and appreciate that for when we do possibly fire patricia and they might see our our organization as as an organization that can believe in coaches and stick with coaches through the thick of it until we reach that promised land so like i just don't think that um I, i what i'm saying is i agree with steve mariucci i think we need to get rid of this revolving door we need to stop bringing in coaches for a couple years and immediately firing them as soon as we don't see immediate success. So I'm cool with sticking with Patricia and uh, I would love to get uh, Luke G's comments on this. Cause I know he's such a Patricia <laughs> hater. <laughs> Seriously. Cause uh, talking to you, Andrew, I want to get your opinion as well. Um, but I know that you're also a Patricia fan as well and, and you want to see him succeed as well. So what are your thoughts on, on this? Dude, honestly, you made a lot. A lot of good points. I wish I wrote them all down because I would love to touch bases <laughs> on all of them. <clears throat> so I'm going to try my best to touch base on all of them. But, like, <laughs> first off, I don't care what coach you bring in. No coach is just going to turn around your franchise in a year or two. And if they do, that's, like, once every 15, 20 years that that might happen. You know, you have um, totally drawing a blank. The Rams head coach, Sean McVay. You know, he came in 13-3. and three, a year after being like three and 13, it's the biggest jump in NFL history from year to year, you know? <clears throat> and like, that just doesn't happen. You know, like there's growing pains, there's this, there's that. And then it could just be, you know, the coach isn't cut out for what they have or whatever, you know? So there's a lot going on. And like, there's coaches that like, there's not many coaches that come into the league 
and you know in a year or two you know they, they go to a new team and they just completely turn around a franchise you know they want to find players that are going to fit their scheme you know they got to find how to utilize these players you know then there's the chemistry of now you have new players you know and like are they able to learn the new system you know so it's not just the coaching you know it's the players and it's the scheme and it's it's a lot of things you know and like if you're constantly finding your coach every every two years you know then what do you expect to get? You know, you, you barely allow them to be really in the building for more than a year because by the time you have a new coach come in their first year, you know, they're probably not able to help with the drafting, the, the scouting, the this, the that, you know, getting their play, the coaches they want in, the players they want in. So then they're using other people's stuff. And then the next year they get a chance and then it's like, all right, you didn't do well. You're out of here, you know? And so it's hard to see Patricia come in and get six wins and then three wins. Don't get me wrong. I freaking hate it. Like I want to win. I want to go to the playoffs. You know, I want to see my team at the end of the year, you know, playing against the highest competition there is, but how do you expect to get there? If you're constantly finding your coaches, you know, you finally have a franchise quarterback, you know, you're trying to build around him. How do you expect the team to function when you're constantly changing coaches, you're constantly changing players, you're constantly changing everything, you know, like, you have to make up your mind, be decisive, and go hard on it. And that's what they're doing right now, you know? <clears throat> they're like, we want big, physical, strong guys, because that's what we want. They're slowly getting it, you know? Year one, you know, we, we won six games. Year two, we won three games. But, like, if their system doesn't work by the end of next, next year, you know, they're going to be out of here. And then I'm fine with it, because you gave them three years. You gave them a couple draft classes. You allowed them to work in free agency. You know, you have Stafford back, which would be healthy. And then there's like, there's no excuses. You know, you had a couple years in your system. You were able to grab what you wanted. Um, but it's hard, you know, it's really hard as a fan to like see your team losing and want nothing to change. Like, obviously we all want something to change and that's winning games, you know? So if we would go next season, we win double digit, uh, you know, games, fans are like, heck yeah, you know, I'm fine with it, you know, but it's hard because they don't realize like there's a lot that goes into it. All they look at is wins and losses and that's what everyone looks at and that's why everyone looks down on the lions because we're not always in that double win category or going to playoffs all the time you know and it's hard to not think about the caldwell area era you know we went to the playoffs uh two out of four years he was here and even the years that we didn't go we still had above average records you know but the thing was we want to elevate to that next level because we want to get wins you know and then we get patricia and we're going six win season three win season and it's like it's hard to watch but i do think you know three four years at the very minimum to see what they got you know let them have a lot of control so that they can do what they want don't restrict them and go from there you know but honestly i'm i i like patricia you know he wants to work him hard he wants to do things right but if he doesn't do well this season you can't you know because you have to build off uh, the years prior, you know, you have to learn from your mistakes. And if we have another season that's like six wins lower or even like eight wins and lower, it's not enough, dude. Like, you know, you've had three seasons, so. Yes. Improvement. I just hope that um, the lines do take a page out of uh, Steve Mariucci's comments and, and really put that into their thought process when evaluating whether to fire and hire coaches. Um, so, yeah. But that being said, okay. Okay, here's a good here's a good situation, right? If the Lions, if Stafford is hurt right again this season and he's out for the season, maybe he's maybe you know, knock on wood on any wood you're near. But like if it happens, <laughs> if I it happens, yeah, yeah, yeah. If Tony <laughs> Romo's whole situation happens and we don't have a quarterback, do we give Patricia another season because he has that new excuse again? What do you think? I'm very conflicted on this, you know, but like, dude, if your quarterback goes down and you didn't prepare for that, which technically you should be prepared, um, it's hard because it's it's hard to say, you know, if freaking Rodgers goes down, you know, oh, that's the coach's fault that they lost all the games without Rodgers, you know, or whatever, you know, and then you look at a team like the Saints, you know, Breeze is out for weeks. They won all their games while he was out. So it's an excuse because our backups are not nearly – as capable as other backups in the league. But at the same time, 
it's Stafford. You know, like Stafford is a franchise quarterback. There's not even many of those in the league, let alone, you know, year to year. So I would definitely give him some time because then at that point, you can kind of just tear down the system and then restart fresh, you know? So yeah. like we're going to be in rebuild mode regardless, you know, if we lose Stafford. So you might as well keep your coach who's already been working on your defense, who's already, you know, installed a lot of stuff and just see what he can do, you know, because now it, you just have more possibilities. And then you have a, a rookie quarterback, potentially, unless, you know, you do a signing or something, which frees up so much in other areas. So you can bring in better defensive players and you can bring in a better, you know, offensive lineman, whatever you need, you know? So it's like, there's a lot that can happen and I would rather not just completely disbar the system, you know, and have to build fresh again at every level. You know, I would like at least some continuum. So I think if something were to happen, I, w- I would love, you know, bring him back just to see, you know, what he can do, you know, just starting fresh. See, I don't know if I agree with you because it's, it's tough because the problem that we had in, in 2019 season was the defense to me. Yeah. Even even with Stafford out, it was still the defense. We were probably the worst defense in the league, if not like top <laughs> worst three, you know. So, in my opinion, if Stafford's hurt again and our defense is just as bad, dude, you were a defensive coordinator. <laughs> like, like, and then you clearly brought in a yes man in Corey Underlin who's, you know, has no experience as a defensive coordinator. What you and they've still never said what well, who's going to be calling the plays, the defensive plays. Dude, we know that he brought in this guy and he brought in we didn't even talk about this yet, but the Titans linebacking coach, which I think was a great addition to our team because their linebacking their linebacking core is great and uh they have a similar system in and uh, uh Mike Vrabel system than Patricia system. So I think that was a great hire. And Corey Underland, from what Eagles fans are saying, I didn't know him, um, but you know, from what they're saying, it's a good hire as well. He's done a pretty good job with the pieces that he had available. And obviously Patricia knows this guy and and, and they can do they can implement the system that Patricia wants is what I'm saying. So this, you know, you've gotten yes men this whole time. This is your defense. This is your scheme, your defense. Make it happen. If it's not happening, Daryl Bevel, we know Daryl Bevel is in, in, in charge of the offense. So might as well just make Daryl Bevel the coach and just bring in another defensive coordinator. Like your system's clearly not working. The only thing that is working is the part that you're not even touching. So I'm sorry, but we have to move on. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I actually I love that you said that. Yeah, like, like, I love like that you we, said that because I actually read something about that and I thought about it. I'm like, you know what though? Like, yeah, I know I respond to, you know, your prompt, but like, if the defense is still that bad, then it's clearly not the defensive coordinators, you know, because like you said, Patricia is a defensive, you know, uh, co- coach, and that's what he specializes in and blah, blah, blah. But like, dude, if our offense is still clicking at a high level and our defense is just complete bottom of the barrel again, Dude, I would love, love for Bevel to step up to head coach, still have control over the offense, and bring in someone on defense because that is that continue continuity that I was talking about, you know, because you still have at least half of your team is still, you know, doing the same thing, and then you just bring in someone else to handle the defense. And I want, if that was the case, a more experienced defensive coordinator. Like, you know, we both wanted Wade Phillips. Wade Phillips. Wade yes. Phillips, bro. <laughs> You know, like, yeah, yeah, you know, I want to see something like that, you know, so I would be fine with that, you know, that that helps with the continuity. He already has control of the offense. The offense has looked terrific. You know, it's different. It's new. It, uh, <laughs> I don't know that was. <laughs> Fire. No. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's just he's bringing that fresh look to our offense, you know, and that's what we need on defense. We need a fresh look. And if they can't bring it this year, I'm all for that, you know. All right, guys, that's all we have for you guys today. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening. Thank you for watching our videos. And thank you for the support. Um, uh, we, you know, like we've talked about many times, we're the real Detroit Lions fans. This is a community of real fans. We're not fair, fair weather fans. We're not hater fans. You know, we are real Detroit Lions fans. So if you're a real Detroit Lions fan, subscribe. Uh, we also want you to comment on what you thought of Steve Mariucci's comments um, about the revolving door in our in our uh, front office and whether you think we should keep giving Patricia chances 
or head coaching in general multiple, multiple years? Or should we cut them as soon as we see defeat and failure like we have many times? And last thing, check the description. We're going to put links in for all those DSA members. And me and Dylan made Twitters, so... <laughs> yeah, 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 we check got... Check that some... out, yo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. We're the real Detroit Lions fans, and uh, yeah, we're out.